so most of you I know. I think we've had lunch or dinner. Or <laughs> you're, you're my friend on Facebook, one or the other. Um, it's great to have you all here. You know, I love doing these because we get to kind of meet everybody that's really passionate about the show or, and, you know, just, you know, just loves kind of what it's all about. And we love doing it. I think that's part of the, the, the passion of it. I think that, for me, it's, it's all about giving something back. Because basically you kind of, it's in a, as Sarah would say, it's like having a baby. It's, it's just, it's so emotional that when you finally give the show to an audience, you have to let it go. I mean, it's, it's quite interesting. You're sending your child off to college. So the mine's in like sophomore year now, I think, <laughs> with everything that we've learned from it. So I brought some crazy stuff, you know, from, do you guys, how many of you know that I'm crazy? Most of you? <laughs> you're in the third row, you know I'm pretty crazy. So um, people say, well, how does it start? Where do you kind of begin all this stuff? Uh, that's the actual original sheet music from 1961. It's uh, The World of Color, written by the Sherman Brothers. And uh, Richard Sherman actually came to the opening of the show. Richard's great, he's fantastic. You know, we went back into the archives and actually all the singers in the very beginning of the show were the actual singers from the original television show. We went to the studio, they still have all the original uh, stripes. The stripe is basically just the singing or just the music or just the percussion. Well, we got just the singers and we dropped it in. So what you're hearing is actual recordings from the, uh, from the 1960s. And Richard told a really great story when we had him at opening night. He goes, well, you know, we wrote this thing and we wrote this line. It's a carousel of color and Kodak was the sponsor. And that year, somehow, magically, they released the Kodak carousel. <laughs> and so basically that's where they got it from because basically they were this big sponsor of, of World of Color at that time. So then I brought some other crazy stuff. This was the best t-shirt, and I told them I was going to do this, so here I go, wee, because I can't read it from up there. Uh, uh, our guest, one of our guests put this together, which I thought was fantastic, you know, 20,346 days since the first episode of The Wonderful World of Color. And then my eyesight goes. <laughs> oh, sat front row at the World of Color presentation at D23. A lot of, did any of you go to that where I was kind of psycho on stage and running around? Oh, two, yay. <laughs> uh, a platform the size of a football field, very true about the show. 585 days since groundbreaking. Yikes, that's a scary story. Scary number. Thousands of pr progressive photos, 200 for fountains, hundreds of updates, hundreds of you know, hours of research, 20,000. And it all comes down to this moment. And it was very true, uh, and I love that, jump back up, that a guest did that because they loved it, they had followed all the construction and put it together, and, and that, that was really special to me. It really was that people really watched. <laughs> this was the most terrifying thing. <laughs> 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 so you guys never see this stuff. So when we finally had, okay, here's the date we're going to open, how many days ahead of time? Was it 90? No, it was less than 60 days. Yeah. We okay. finally had a date. Yeah. So I'm in the car, I'm coming in every day. I look up, 29 days, the world of color. I'm trying to excite the cast. Let them know how it's coming. We're like, have you seen that sign? <laughs> look at the camera. And every portal of the cast coming to this part. So our, our crew wanted to go still bigger numbers and start putting them up. Because <laughs> it really is, I mean, it, it, it was a lot of work. I mean, Basically, people go, well, what did you do? Well, I gave up uh, all my nights. I literally worked night shifts for about five, six months. Um, we would come in at probably six, seven at night and work till six or seven in the morning, six days a week to get the show done. Because a lot of it was learning what the show was. I mean, yeah, we're at D23, we're dancing around, going, yeah, it's fountains, it's fountains. When you finally get the fountains, you finally can see what they are and they're actors to me, and they're performers. So you get to see what the performers do well and what the performers don't do well. <laughs> so that's why things change when you start. So this was crazy. Now the next piece is really fun for me. This was the internet stuff. Did any of you do any of these? <laughs> if you are, I'll give you a prize. I mean, these are fantastic. You know, in, in between takes and stuff, we would basically go search the internet for crazy stuff that was being put on it. We do read it. We have a good time. So those of you who post stuff, we actually do read it. We don't comment on it, but we do read it. So my favorite was there was all this stuff going on about World of Color, and there were two sides, yay and yay, and all this stuff, because people were leaking movies that they took from the hotel. 
So somebody posted, don't judge me so soon. We haven't even, we haven't even opened yet, which I love. So we love that one. So if you did that, that was great. Then one of our fans named Boy33 did a paper sculpture of the fountain, which was also a really fun artistic one. And then my favorite one was, Little Squirt, rest in peace. <laughs> and they actually wrote a whole memorial online. There's a whole bunch of stuff on it. It was quite, quite cute. But, you know, he actually is in the show somewhere. Now. Look. And then, of course, the best show plug ever. We did not have anything to do with this. The writers of this show did it on their own. So enjoy this little thing. Some of you may have seen it. Uh, <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. Where have you been? We stayed for the California Adventure Water Show. It was pure Disney magic. <laughs> so I love it. We're all making phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because um, those just happened on the road. We had nothing to do with that. We're all shocked going, wow, yeah. the writers must love us. So that was a lot of fun. And then I'm going to show you something actually no one has ever seen. Actually, most of the executives uh, were probably the only ones who ever saw this. It basically was the very first step at putting the show together. And it's called an animatic. It was done by our team in France. Uh, Fabrice, Fabrice is happy with you love Fabrice, he's great. He did a lot of the visual work on the show, uh, dealt with all the uh, projection media, and really put together this piece. So if you are reading it, and the English is a little strange, it's because he's from France. <laughs> Nothing against the French, but he is, you know, he tried his best. So. Yeah, this was uh, October 2008, so it's when we first started to go out and put pieces of the story together. So some of it uh, you're going to see is pretty spot on. It's a lot of it in kind of its early ideas. Some of it never happened. I'll have to explain this piece. Original, uh, original version of the show had Marlon and Dory in water traveling to the water well. Well, it was one of those things we tested and went, <laughs> that didn't quite work. <laughs> Yeah, it, was, it was fun on, on an animatic, but it never quite paid off in the lagoon. Because people were like, what's that orange thing going? <laughs> so here we go. Enjoy this little piece. Oh, and one last caveat to you, like some. But uh, there is some, there's a lot of tent music in this. So when you get to Buzz Lightyear, no, it wasn't intended to be in the show, but it's all we had at the time. Because Mark wasn't working on the score yet. <laughs> 